All right, let's get back to business. We took uh, a little bit more than five minutes, but let's not do that. All right, uh, we'll reopen this session. And Lisa, can you, you got something to really... uh, I just wanted to state that I apologize for not having the Robert's Rules book or the um, Sunshine Law book with me. This time I forgot to get my name tag, which is in it. So. Um, but I will be looking up all the things we discussed today and had questions about so that we don't have the same stuff in the box next time, including um, how to withdraw motions, voting on original motions after they're amended and approved, and also looking up the email I got from Teresa Henry, or that we all got from Teresa Henry at the beginning of this process um, about uh, Sunshine Law and that sort of thing. And uh, I will get back to you shortly on that and also at the beginning of the meeting. Susan Dolan had a request that um, I send out basic information on Robert's Rules small groups, and I apologize, I meant to do that a long time ago, and I got caught up in writing all this other stuff. So I will uh, go ahead and get that done, and then also um, put a link to our amendments to the small groups that we have amended. That's all. All right, let's continue then with section 3.8, excuse me, 3.8, investigations. Jason, will you read what you would offer? 3.8 Investigations. The Board may make investigations into the affairs of the City and the conduct of any City Department, office, or agency. And for these purposes, may subpoena witnesses, administer oaths, make testimony, and require the production of evidence. Any person who fails or refuses to obey a lawful order issued in the exercise of those powers by the Board of Aldermen shall be guilty of an offense and shall be punishable as determined by ordinance. Make testimony. Or take testimony. Or take testimony. You all made it up. Oh, I read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, what's pretty? So, the only other thing. Yeah. Yes. I have on this one a 3.8, and on the second one I have 3.7. Yeah, that was um, changed. The, uh, the section number was changed. I forget. Section for city clerk. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The section for city clerk was moved to, there's an actual future section we're going to have about um, municipal uh, departments, and so that was uh, going to be moved to that session to be more appropriate with uh, the chronological order of the charter. So this is investigations? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Any questions on this section, Janet? Um, he said the board may make investigations. The paper I have said the board of aldermen. Right. Right. Yeah, that's correct. I corrected that the second part oh, there. That's okay. said more for short. Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. She's been clicked for a while. I haven't got to her, so you're on the no, I just wanted to confirm with Ted that he's okay. Um, with that, because uh, I, I didn't, I wanted to ask his expert opinion, maybe Michael's as well, about the offenses. If it, any offenses or misdemeanor offenses, or if you any, because I think you had mentioned something to me about misdemeanor, putting the board misdemeanors, and I didn't know. The word misdemeanors not in there. Correct. Only the state can find misdemeanors. I mean, okay. the state has to find misdemeanors. Okay. City ordinance. Okay, I just wanted to, I didn't know the legal difference if it would matter, so I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. All right, any discussion on this? Other than I will take a motion. I'll move. All right, thank you. Thank you. Michael, second. Jim. Right. Lisa, please reread. Jason, and just how the file that she reads. Yeah. 3.8 Investigations. The Board of Aldermen may make investigations into the affairs of the city and the conduct of any city department, office, or agency, and for these purposes may subpoena witnesses, administer oaths, take testimony, and require the production of evidence. 
Any person who fails or refuses to obey a lawful order issued in the exercise of those powers by the Board of Aldermen shall be guilty of an offense and shall be punishable as determined by ordinance. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we will take a vote, please. Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Mary Jane Van Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Jim Asher? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Tyler Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Harbaugh? Yes. Motion carries, call zero. All right, 3.8 is in the books. Uh, section 3.9 is now independent annual audit. Okay, is everybody there? 3.9. Jason. Independent annual audit. The Board of Aldermen shall provide for an annual independent audit of all city accounts, which shall include a management report. The audit shall be made by a certified public accountant or firm of such accountants who have no direct or indirect conflict of interest in the physical affairs of the city government of the city government or any of its officers. A copy of the entire audit report <coughs> shall be kept in the clerk's office and shall be opened to public inspection. Okay, motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, what was that, Lisa? Uh, are we, did we agree to change it? Did we agree to change it to city clerk instead of just clerk? I can't remember anymore. Because some people want to clerk. Right. Shall be kept. No, I don't mean just the section, I mean overall. Change, instead of just saying clerk, change it to city. I just want to make sure I'm clear on that. Because we did say city clerk. Last time, you wanted that. You just said city clerk, it was the municipal department. So you just want to add the word city. No, I, I'm just word. asking. We, we made this determination last time. I just don't remember. Yeah, that. that's fine. It says, correct, it says clerk's office, so you can say in the city clerk's office. I was just fine. making sure it was on board of all and then throughout the document. I didn't. I couldn't remember if we had agreed to clerk or city clerk, and I just want to make sure when I get the things out. Is okay. Is everybody okay with that? It was just a clarification, not really a change. All right, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Yeah, that was pretty quick. That was Charlotte and then Mary Jane. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll take a vote. Jim Asia? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Susan Dolan? Oh, I'm sorry. Janet Emerson? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Harbo? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. All right. We'll now go on to 3.10 legislative proceedings. Jason, will you read what you have there, please? Yeah, and this this one has uh, four different, excuse me, seven different sections. So I think it'd be wise to go by, yeah, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, so yeah, seven different sections. It'd be wise, obviously, to vote each by each section, so we can because discuss it fairly and such. But anyway, three point ten legislative proceedings, section A, meetings, the board of Alderman. Or, yeah, the Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly at least once each month at such times and places as the Board of Aldermen may prescribe. The open meetings of the Board of Aldermen may be recorded by the city and or by the people. The mayor, upon their own motion, may, or at the request of three or more of the board members, shall call a special meeting of the Board of Aldermen for a time no sooner than 24 hours after notice is given to all members of the to the city clerk and to the people. Any 
folks to have two meetings a month that can be canceled if there's some extenuating circumstances down to one a month. That can be canceled for good cause. Right, that's what I mean. Um, and so that, that differs from Jason's, if I understand Jason's correctly, of a minimum of once a month. So that it would sort of kind of be guaranteed twice a month except and, and then rescheduling the Everybody's clear on the so why, not, why not just leave it the way it is at least once a month? Because that's right. was getting his point was that um, he wanted to ensure it will be done once a month. Right. He wanted to ensure that it would not just regularly go down to once a month from um, that. But I can answer the question he said. He that he said he liked. Um, that may or may not gel with or that we need to revise, I suppose. Um, the Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly. Oh wait, that's that's Jason's. Um, the Board of Aldermen shall meet two times a month on Tuesdays in the council chambers of Raytown City Hall beginning at 7 p.m. Regular meetings may be rescheduled by the majority of the board for good cause. A rescheduled regular meeting shall occur the following Tuesday if the scheduled meeting falls on a national holiday or any election day. And essentially this is language to have the current ordinance. A uh, point of information, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, I, I I agree with a lot of the verbiage. I, I I kind of agree with Ray. This is kind of the calendar for the the people. If they just scan this thing and they see that it says that the uh, board of Alden meets on the first and third Tuesday of each month, that sets a that sets a time schedule in their head. A lot of folks don't even know when they meet. Uh, maybe possibly somebody will catch this if they read it. And know that the, the city council meets on the first or third Tuesday of every month. Well, the only, the only question I want everybody to consider here, though, is when you specify to that degree in the charter, if it were to have to change, then you're going to have to have an amendment to the charter. It would be the same as if we were to change when special elections would be held. Okay, I just want to make that clear. I, I know, but I mean, it's the same. Situation for any item in the charter. I don't foresee any governmental authority coming forward saying you will only meet once a month. <clears throat> but I could be wrong. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, on this, you know, I have an issue with minimum at one minimum one time a month or at least one time a month because. For the most part, you know, it, when I since I've been doing it, we met twice a month, and it started out at seven thirty, and then about two years in, it changed from seven to seven or seven thirty to seven, which was a board thing that we did that we changed it. Um, it just seems like, and we have had cancel. We canceled them before because there wasn't anything on, to come forward. So it's not like, and so if you say that you have to have, you know, two times a month, we're going to sit up here and just look at each other because there's nothing on the, the docket to make a decision about. And that's happened several times that there was, that, that meetings were canceled, and it usually was in the summer months, not only for nothing on to come forward, but also I know a couple of times for snowstorms. So I just, you know, I kind of like the other one. I mean, at least one time a month, you've got to meet at least one time a month. But, and I, I've never seen this happen to where you have two meetings and both of them were canceled because there was nothing coming forward. There's always something, but a lot of times, it, you know, it was extended so you wouldn't just come up here for one issue. It's that, you know, it wasn't a pressing issue, so you went to the next meeting. So there was more stuff on it, so when you came up here, you say, and got through the information. Mr. Chairman, I got you. Sorry. Um, first of all, I think it takes kind of a negative view of elected officials and, and human nature when you assume that uh, it, they don't have to meet more than one. That's what they're going to do. Uh, because we know in reality, and I don't really know in reality, I can only speak for myself. When you run as an elected official, you want to run to be part of the city, and you
and you have to read, for example, the word of swipes to get a pass, that you wouldn't take two months to do that, or you would never get anything accomplished. Um, and at the same time, um, Jason's uh, version here says at least once a month. It doesn't say only once a month. And there's a big difference between only and at least. Because like uh, Charlotte said, I can remember, um, I think I remember at least twice that we met three times a month. And we did that because we needed to. Um, the only time we only met once a month was because, yeah, we think we've got to be canceled because we had a major snowstorm. And uh, it was dangerous for people to be out. Everything was canceled. So, and that didn't happen very often. Uh, like I said, I've done for 16 years. But the, the question is, it's a matter of good faith. And again, if you don't have good faith in human nature on elected officials, you can probably write a lot more stuff here to make sure that they, they do the job. But then it becomes a very negative, kind of a hostile um, document. So, um, I think that was the intention of the way you wrote it, was just to keep it, you know. In and, I, and it is pretty consistent with other charges. I mean, I'll put my two cents in there, Greg, before you get yours, but I know you want to come back to that. So, go ahead. Well, I, I would simply go back to earlier comments about um, the importance of this is the way we've always done it, which I heard earlier when we were talking about uh, previous issues this evening having to do with special elections, but I guess that was then and this is now. Um, I, I was on the city council for 27 years, and I do not remember any council meetings that were canceled during the time that I served. Now, I do know that since I was, since I've been off the city council, which has been for a good number of years, there have been a number of cancellations. It also seems that there's not as much legislation coming out of the recent count, uh, city councils. I can't think of uh, ordinances being written such as not as active. So perhaps it's a change, you know, with the way that people are governed. It may have to do with the whoever's in charge and out stripping <coughs> people on the agenda and don't let things on. But there's plenty of that can be discussed and improved on in this city. And I think that it's important, more the most important thing is that you open up these lines of communication and the transparency that you need for people to be able to come up and see their governor in action. If you take it to once a month, that is really cutting back how frequently they can do that. And I think Mr. Azer did mention in his speech something that is a, a very important thing. If you want to pass an ordinance, it may take you two months to do it, where there may be some expediency needed. Okay. So I, I think that you need the regularity of having a meeting. Okay. I think we've had enough discussion on that sheet. Well, Okay, well, I have a feeling it's going to be I mean, you really have to do that. Yeah. Very good. I'm going to go Lisa first. Okay. Um, I, I, I am a little bit confused. I mean, I like both of them, frankly, but um, I think it might be helpful to specify that there should be two unless in case of emergency or something else happening. Um, you can always just meet and not have work and go home or meet and not have anything to do and go home. Um, but, uh, in our current um, ordinance, sec, uh, this is correct, right? you know, current ordinance that it says the Board of Aldermen of the City of Greytown shall meet regularly on the first and third Tuesday of each month in the Council Chamber. So it already says that we're meeting twice a month in the current ordinance. So what we're doing is changing it to once, or at least once rather. Um, and it specifies more detail. I don't know in the future if they'll be specifying that detail in, in a new ordinance or because, as I understand it currently, um, if we write a charter and there's and it's a, the ordinance is okay with it, they keep the wording rather than throw it out. So it would still specify by ordinance after this char charter is passed that it would be meeting at 7 p.m. at such and such and such and such. Um, and so um, the, currently we have twice a month. Um, it, it does not say three, it does not say one, um, but it does have information on how the meetings can be rescheduled, and that's by good cause. And I think that might be important to add in, um, it, it's, 
not quite half a decimal and half a decimal the other, but um, if, if we only do, if we do two, then we can just say they can be canceled or rescheduled according to good cause, for instance. And that way, they can just cancel it rather than show up if they say they don't have something to do. That's all I'm going to All right, Bridget. I don't think it says in here anywhere that they're going to have one meeting a month. It says the board shall meet at least once each month. It doesn't say they're going to meet once a month, only once a month. So I think the way it's worded here is fine, at least each month. And, you know, people know <coughs> that the board meetings are held twice a month, first and third of Tuesday, 7 o'clock. They're grown people, you don't need to spoon feed them. Most of them read, most of them have television, they watch. I mean, come on. We're, we're dealing with adults here. I think they could charter a meeting where a bunch of people can hang out for a meeting that didn't exist. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Jason. Whatever we decide to vote on this, I think it'd be, I think you leave the dates of the meeting and the time up to the board of this. Exactly. You don't include that in the charter. So in terms of, you want to write down the first and third Tuesday of each month, council chambers at 7 p.m. That, that, that's left up to ordinance. This is the charter. The charter is you know, the skeleton, the functions of how the city operates, you know, voter protections, things such as that. Um, you start getting real detail with some of that stuff, it, it can come back and bite you in certain situations. I mean, for instance, in the charter, we have it says we need the council chambers. Well, you know, what if a, you know, a, a fire happens here? Well, then you know, like, not the council chambers. We didn't do anything about you know, being here. We, we, you we, that we, that's the point, though. That's the good call. And that's the thing. Well, here's the deal, though. I think you leave a lot of this up to ordinance, though, because things change. You know, I mean, it's just whatever we end up deciding on voting on, I think that type of situation, if you left up to ordinance, like it has been. And you know what? It's been left up to ordinance now, and it's worked. They've had to be this month. It's Unless it was a, you know, Extenuating circumstances. It and takes the door open. Okay, it takes the door Okay, go ahead and ask me. Hold on, Greg. Greg, there's other people that want to speak. Yeah, Jim. It goes back to who shall determine how many meetings they're going to have. Will we'll be done by charter or done by ordinance? For example, you could even have a board that might say, we want to meet three times a month. But if you write it away, is proposed to have twice a month, and you couldn't even write that ordinance. Because it says you shall be twice a month. You can't do it unless you have a special cause. Maybe they just want to make a regular schedule three three mini months <clears throat> every month. They couldn't do that because you're taking away from the board their ability to set their own meeting. And that is covering the next section of the But uh all right, so right now, Greg, you got a, an amended motion, or at least an amended. I haven't got a second yet. Okay, but are you, you're making a motion to amend Jason's original one, is that correct? Why don't we simply say the board, shall, board of aldermen shall meet regularly at least twice a month, twice each month at such times and places as the, as the board of aldermen may prescribe. And then we can throw in part about the good cause. Which says regular meetings may be rescheduled by the majority of the board. So, for good cause. And that, that does the same thing as saying you're going to meet once a month. The only difference is it makes you have to do it really in a very public way. I'm sorry. Could, could you repeat that again? So, I said, you want to start off? So, so you pretty much want to keep the last few sentences on this section A. Everything, you know, everything about the mayor upon their own motion or the press of three board members, three or more board of all members shall call a special meeting of the board. Well, that's, 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 that's appropriate. That. That's okay. appropriate, yes. So you're just talking about the open meetings to keep that too. So the first sentence, the board shall meet regularly. What do you want to add? At least twice each month. At such times and places as the board of aldermen may prescribe. Regular meetings may be rescheduled by the majority of the board for good cause. Okay. Did you motion for that? 
That's my motion. I'll second. Thank you. All right, we have a motion, amended motion, yes, on the floor. There are articles. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to check because there was no motion on your original uh, reading, correct? Hold on a second. I think there was. All right. So it is an amendment, and we'll go through the same procedure that we went through on the first one. First, we're going to vote to amend the original, and then we will vote on it. Uh, to see if it actually passes. Okay, so that we're clear on that. All right. Um, now to double check that the wording is correct for the amended version. Meetings. The Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly at least twice each month at such times and places as the Board of Aldermen may prescribe. Regular meetings may be rescheduled by the Board of Aldermen for good cause. And everything else is the same. Any other discussion with that? We'll take a vote on the amended the amendment of the motion. Janet Emerson. Janet Emerson. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jamaica. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Charlotte Wilson. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Any other discussion at this point before we make a roll call vote on the actual motion now? Including the amended motion. Just make sure that you read the whole thing. Okay, we're going to reread the whole thing. All right, Lisa, please reread the whole thing. Point ten legislative proceedings. A. Meetings. The Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly at least twice each month at such times and places as the Board of Aldermen may prescribe. Regular meetings may be rescheduled by the Board of Aldermen for good cause. The open meetings of the Board of Aldermen may be recorded by the city and or by the people. The mayor, upon their own motion, may, or at the request of three or more aldermen shall, call a special meeting of the Board of Aldermen for a time no sooner than 24 hours after a notice is given to all members of the Board of Aldermen, to the City Clerk, and to the people. Any further discussion? Yes, Charlotte. And so it was said that at least twice a month? Is that what was said? Okay. Uh, Charlotte. Read that one more time, please. 3.10a. Sorry. Meetings. The Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly at least oh, one okay. meetings. The Board of Aldermen shall meet regularly at least twice each month at such times and places as the Board of Aldermen may prescribe. Regular meetings may be rescheduled by the Board of Aldermen for a good cause. The open meetings of the Board of Aldermen may be recorded by the city and or by the people. The mayor, upon their own motion may, or at the request of three or more aldermen shall, call a special meeting of the Board of Aldermen for a time no sooner than 24 hours after notice is given to all members of the Board of Aldermen, to the city clerk, and to the people. Is that correct, Jason? Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other discussion? We'll take a vote. Mark Moore. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Jason Green. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Jim Asia. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Lisa Emerson. Yes. Sandra Harwell. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Section B. And I think we just have to read section B. I don't think we have to read this. Section B, rules and journals. The board of Aldermen shall determine its own rules and order of business by ordinance. Shall call, it shall cause a journal of its open proceedings to be kept, and this journal shall be open to public inspection. Section. I think that may be covered in the city clerk section. I think it's within 
discussions. Let's call the roll. Call the roll. shall determine its own rules and order of business by ordinance. It shall cause a journal of its open proceedings to be kept, and this journal shall be open to public inspection. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Jim Ager? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Section C, voting. Voting. Voting shall be by roll call, except on procedural motions, and the yeas and nays shall be recorded in a journal. A majority of members of the Board of Aldermen shall constitute a quorum for its business, except as otherwise provided in this charter. The affirmative vote of a majority of the entire board shall be necessary to adopt any ordinance. Just one quick thing. The entire Board of Aldermen. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, that's one of Voting. Voting shall be by roll call except on procedural motions and the yeas and nays are. Do you have a preference for ayes or nays? Or, you said yeas. Okay. I just want to make sure it was correct. Um, and the yeas and nays shall be recorded in the journal. A majority of members of the Board of Aldermen shall constitute a quorum for its business, except as otherwise provided in this charter. The affirmative vote of a majority of the entire Board of Aldermen shall be necessary to adopt any order. Jim Major? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Jen Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Jane Van Busker? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. All right, B. It's a little bit longer, and we'll just make sure we read every word. Go ahead. Form of ordinances. Proposed ordinances and resolutions shall be introduced in the Board of Aldermen only in written or printed form. The enacting clause of all ordinances drafted by the Board of Aldermen shall be reordained by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Greytown. The enacting clause of all ordinances submitted by initiative shall be reordained by the people of the City of Greytown. Okay, discussion here. Yes, sir. I just have a question. Um, proposed ordinances and resolutions shall be introduced to the Board of Aldermen or in? Shall be introduced to the Board of Aldermen only in a written or printed word. Is your interpretation? Yes, again, it does say in, probably should say to. Okay, this is not correct. Yeah. So the first sentence there, proposed ordinances and resolutions shall be introduced to instead of in the board of the law. And that really is true. Yeah. You know, if it's agreeable by all the commissioners, it says a grammatical thing that it doesn't get amended. No. And, um, it has to be motion yet, so, so. Okay. But I appreciate the correction. <laughs> yeah. I make a motion to approve with the word to. Any other discussion? Fair uh, And we are on section A. Uh, section D. Just to read the words. Read number? 3.10 D. D is a dog. Right, D. Sorry. Never mind. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, section D. Uh, 
motion and second. Any other further discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. D. Form of ordinances. Proposed ordinances and resolutions shall be introduced to the Board of Aldermen only in written or printed form. The enacting clause of all ordinances drafted by the Board of Ald Aldermen shall be, be it ordained by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Raytown. The enacting clause of all ordinances submitted by initiative shall be, be it ordained by the people of the City of Raytown. Jim Major? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gutman? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker? No. Greg Walters? Yes. <coughs> Section E, procedure, Jason. Um, and before I read this, I want to say real quickly, um, this is Janet Emerson. Um, I was actually correct. A comment about keeping a copy, I believe that's uh, for the city clerk. Is, is that in this section or what was that in the future section on the procedural? Okay, yeah, well, I thought it was in here because I don't have a copy of it here. It's actually in both of this. It's in both, and okay, so anyway, it's mentioned in this one as well about the city uh, procedure. It says, uh, except, uh, section E, procedure, except in the case of emergency ordinances, every proposed ordinance shall be read by title in open board of aldermen meetings two times before final passage. At least one week shall elapse between introduction and final passage. A copy of each proposed ordinance shall be provided for each alderman at the time of his introduction. Copy shall be provided by the city clerk for inspection by the people, including a copy in the office of the city clerk, until it is finally adopted or it fails in adoption. People interested in a proposed ordinance shall be given an opportunity to be heard before the Board of Aldermen in accordance with such rules and regulations as the Board of Aldermen may adopt. If the Board adopts an amendment to a proposed ordinance, constitutes a change the board of aldermen, yeah, it constitutes a change in substance any member of the board of aldermen may require that proposed ordinance as amended be placed on file for inspection by the people in the office of city clerk for an additional week before final passage in the absence of such a request the board of aldermen may consider the amended ordinance at the same time I know there's a lot there, but uh, again, Jason, can you quantify where all this came from? This is uh, procedural motions that uh, I've read um, in the MML document and in uh, states with our states and cities with uh, charters very similar to our structure of government. Okay. Any questions regarding this? Well, I have some suggestions. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if, if it would be a good idea, instead of just reading the title on its first reading, that it be read in its entirety. Uh, proposed ordinances. We're talking about the walls of the city, and sometimes there are. How do you say the devil's in the details? <laughs> That's probably the best way to put it. I also wonder about the copy provided by the city clerk to the public without without charge. Uh, you could put a limit on it in case you've got something that's going to use up tons of paper, but I think that we should go to extra lengths to make things available to the public if they want to have a copy. The only other comment I would have is that it strikes me as odd for a document that originally proposed one meeting a month that only allows for one week for this thing to be voted on the second time. Good, Jim. Um, I guess my only question to that would be if, if, if a, an ordinance contains numerous pages 
readings. Uh, and you're reading it in its entirety. Um, does that mean you're going to read all three, four, five, six, seven pages of it? Yeah. Or are you going to read just a paragraph that describes it? I mean, I've never heard an audience have actually read in its entirety. We get copies of it, but we don't read the whole thing on that. And the copies are available to the public, to the public anyway, so that they are open for them to read them at the meetings. And online. Yeah, okay. If you have a document that's 10 pages long, you take one paragraph and do it justice. Right. I mean, seriously. And the other question is if it's available to the public, it should be available to the public. My way of thinking without charge. I, I realize you probably do want to put something practical in place if somebody doesn't love them. Make them mm -hmm. the I, I don't think they're charged for them anytime that they're up here. So. They only put one, the public, one copy out there for the public. It's true. Okay, Lisa. <clears throat> um, would everybody be comfortable with striking by title just so that the uh, Ordinances are in fact read before the public multiple times. I. All right, Charlie. Show me some No. A for us when we come, you know, come to the meeting and it's read by title. I know what to talk about because I already read all my stuff, and I agree that, that the public should be able to do that. But do you know how long is some of that stuff could be if you're reading? What exactly do you want to read? Or you want to read just the entire ordinance that starts, you know, I don't know what with me, but you know, the entire ordinance that, that it eventually the mayor signs, just that document or all the supporting documents. Are you documents? talking about attachments? Uh, no, I'm not interested. Okay. So you're just at, at that one sheet. But even that one sheet for a a um, zoning change or something like that, two pages of changes. Well, if that was a question, I, I would say that um, it, it's just part of public transparency. I mean, it might take five minutes to read mm -hmm. a couple pages, but if, even if it takes ten, that I mean, that's a function of the people knowing what's going on in the well, government. Well, and I do agree with that, but we used to read those. And it take a lot of time, and it was not only read once, it was read twice. So, you know, people are up here doodling, waiting for the whole thing to be read again. So we can vote, discuss, and, and you know, I think it would be very time when I agree that, you know, for the transparency and stuff like that, but it depends on how many of those you've got on a docket and how long it's going to take, too. Um, and how well you can understand. I mean, there are ways that, that people can get the information. There truly is. And we've, and we've been we've done so much better at that, of, of allowing that process to have available copies, of, you know, back and stuff like that. But I really hesitate. Now, if a board member requested, would you read that in its entirety, just in the in the ordinance, like it's coming forward? I suppose a board member could request that. But it wouldn't have to be put in here that every single time there's an ordinance or a resolution or something, all of that has to be read. It just, it's going to take a lot of time. It took a lot of time all the way back. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. And it doesn't just take a lot of time. But imagine if you were in a classroom in school and your teacher read the textbook to you, read four pages. How well would kids really learn and understand it? And, I, and especially when you get into zoning ordinances, um, you know, it, it just it doesn't make sense to do it that way and expect it to really make anything out of it. It just eats up time. Okay. Yes, Mary Jane. Mr. Chairman, we have gone past a lot of time for our meetings, so we need to make a motion to suspend that. Uh, well, uh, I mean, we, we have one item here that we have read that we are in discussion. Are you saying you want to finish this 
one. Okay. Are you are you saying to finish E or finish? Just finish E. Okay, and you're making that motion. I am. All right. We have a motion on the floor to finish just E. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. It's just a point of order. Right. And we voted in at 9 o'clock. Right. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? If the motion doesn't pass, then are we. Say as long as you want. Yeah. I mean, well, just some of the motions, and I would hope we would be actually able to finish section three. Um, I would really like to finish section three if at all possible. Uh, anyway, we have a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no other discussion, we'll take a vote. Okay. Yes vote means? A yes vote means that we will finish only finish it up with E. Jim Major? Yes. Ted Bowman? Yes. Susan Dole, uh, Janet Emerson? Yes. Ms. Emerson, no. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Mm, no. Sandy Hartwell? Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlie Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buskirk? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Okay, motion passes 10 to 2. We'll finish up with item 3.10E <coughs> and adjourn for the evening. So, at this point, is there any other discussion on E? Or I'll take a motion to approve it. I'd like to motion that we uh, approve it without a title. Strike, strike the words by title. Strike the word, strike the word title. By title, yes. Um, Which means you're saying three title. Right, okay, sorry. Um, I have a motion that we. Um, E procedure, except in the case of emergency ordinances, every proposed ordinance shall be read in an open board of alderman meetings two times before final passage. At least one week shall elapse between introduction and final passage. Everything else is the same? Yeah. Okay. That's the motion on the floor. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to find a way to, like, to understand, like, the transparency, like, I'm, I'm really, you know, that's a big thing to me, too. But try to, like, include maybe a word instead of just giving it by title, but put down, like, you know, read the summary or read, you know, because the situation becomes is, you know, I understand at one point you need that, and then you read the, the whole thing, that's the whole entirety of two times, it can be 12 pages long. I mean, that really is not very efficient. You know, government seems to find good ways to be inefficient. I, I just really think that some of this can really create some inefficient problems. I, I, I guess the question I'm asking is, is there something we can include in there to kind of limit, limit what is read so that it's not extenuating to really just circumstantial, th circumstantial things or things that are completely unnecessary to even read? It's really just wasting time. You know, maybe include like maybe like a you know, ordinance summary or something to that effect, or a description of the ordinance needs to be read. Instead of saying by title, put down, you know, a description of the ordinance. Well, we have a motion and a second that can be amended. I'm just, I'm just making that conversation go right. for everyone. So. Yes, Jim. Yeah, and just for those that don't know, when an ordinance is presented, the department explains what it is, what it does. It may even have public testimony. So they just never read it by title and vote on it or discuss it. But there is a verbal description and, and a chance for questions and answers so everybody understands it before we even have discussion. Uh, so it, it's, I think there's a clear attempt to educate the public. And, and it, I really can't think of any time anything controversial will slip by the public. I mean, really, it's, there are citizens out of the paper who close attention to what the board does. They do read it, they do watch it, they know what's going on. It may not be dozens and dozens of them, but they only take one. When they come up and question it, they have, they have the opportunity for, to, to address the board before the media about it. So I think we covered pretty, pretty well to give the public the opportunity to be educated, to address the board about it. And to understand what's going on. Mr. Chairman. Yes. What if we were to compromise and say we read in its entirety of its first reading and not make it a, 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 
but the other thing I was looking at uh, too was leaving it the way it is unless somebody asked for it to be read in its entirety that it came to the meeting. Or even somebody from the audience, one of the people. Yeah. So that's on, I'm sorry, is I mean, I'm just trying to make an alternative. Well, and I agree with that, but I don't think that leaving it up to the public, one of the board of aldermen could request, could that be you know, read in its entirety? But really, I mean, if it's a public hearing or a big issue or something, and that, you know, pages and pages of stuff is read, I would much rather have that time spent on the public comments of the hearing than listening to 10 pages of what the, you know, what the final document is that we're voting on. So I'd much rather see the opportunity given to the people that came that's going to have to sit and listen to 10 pages of stuff, but all they want to do is come up and, and say their piece about whatever hearing issue that is. Um, I really hesitate. My question I is, my question is, is the document made available at the public hearings for an individual to pick up and read for themselves at the meeting if they have questions? No. No. I, I had it no. taken back from you by the city clerk because he said that's our public document. It is. Which means that that's singular. One, so if you got a 30 people in here, you got one that they can all look okay. at. Okay. I mean, I'm just asking for a question. I mean, or, yes, Jim. Yeah, I, I think it is. The fact is that it's read, and you have a, a two-week time limit between those times. It's been on television. You know what the ordinance is. They have a chance always to come up and find out what's in the ordinance, or to find out what's in the discussion. It's a matter of public record. Right? Yeah, that two-week period. Okay. 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 Janet? Okay. I think perhaps just a summary would work because they're going to get the discussion. Whoever brings the motion is going to have the discussion and tell us exactly what it is in open meeting. It's not on television for everyone. It's not. We do not get to see council meetings. We don't have Comcast. We don't get to so maybe, I'm sorry, I have to jump Go ahead, Tim. So, Greg, would it satisfy if the board member were able to demand to be read at the first time? Yeah, does, it does make sense because it would be, in my mind, the duty of an alderman representing his people if they felt strongly about it to say, I've got a lot of people here, they want to hear the board of it. There's a lot of peer pressure in certain instances for him not to do that. Uh, but it would come down to the strength of the individual, I guess. Right. I, I, think, I, I think the points about getting business done are, are, are well taken, but I also, also think people ought to have, have the ability to say, well, no, I want you to tell us exactly what we wrote about for you. But it, it, if it will suffice to have somebody think, can, can we work this so that an alderman has the ability to, to, to demand a, a full read? I'm thinking about the mayor's side of this. If you've got a mayor that does not want to do that, how is that going to, how is this going to solve that problem? You won't have any choice. Yeah, you won't have any choice. I mean, if it's, if it's written in here, that if an alderman asks for it to be reread, or for the least type thing, Read and has to be read. Okay. If we put that in the document, that's what it's okay. <coughs> All right. I'm sorry. Okay. It's an ending. Okay. It's an ending. Um, I'd be fine. We call them yes. Yes. Okay. I'd be fine with having, like, keeping things the way they are on this E, and then maybe the sentence afterwards says that at least one week shall elapse between the introduction and final passage, then have a sentence saying an alderman. Uh, can demand it to be, you know, uh, the ordinance to be read in its entirety. Period. No one can demand the ordinance to be read in its entirety.
and you read it to somebody, you can't tell me that's educational. It just doesn't work. I, I would never attempt to teach my class by reading a chapter to and, and that's what, and what we're saying, that's more important to do that than it has to staff to introduce what's being presented, to explain it, to give people a chance to come back and address it even before the next meeting, or to be educated on if they really feel they need to do that. Okay, so could it be something that where we read, or where we put in other places where uh, at the request of three or more board of all the members, um, uh, something can be read or... Um, yeah. The reason why, and I go back to the next okay. question, is that any member of the public, because always, that's why we say, hey, there must be a time in between the two that it's just read, and then, or it's introduced, and people have at least a week or more to come to City Hall to get a copy of it at the request, and they are always given a copy at the institutional request. Okay. That's why they do that. All right, Janet, one more time.
Um, so with my my point is I, I, I understand that people do not want to have in this day and age the entire thing ready for everybody's in a hurry to get things done. However, if there are situations where you have ordinances, and particularly in ones where you have, may have a small segment of the community that is really concerned to get, uh, and I think most most issues, instances that come to my mind would be zoning issues that I experienced myself, where people who were in a certain situation were adamantly opposed to it, and they wanted everybody to be certain that they understood exactly what was being done to them in their situation. Usually when that communication was done properly, that ordinance was dead uh, by the time, by time the final thing happened. So it, it gives a, a defense for people to defend their property and their way of life and so forth. So I don't see anything wrong with allowing a certain, any certain member to stand up and say, I don't just for this entire thing, so that everybody can see what's going on. And that, I think it would be a rare occasion when that happens, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I've also got one other clarification before you get there, Jason. I just want to say, so would you be happy with, uh, in your opinion, if this section E was remained the same, like I mentioned earlier, but Maybe adding that sentence about an element uh, can request the ordinance to its entirety. I would be happy with that. And that the ordinance is right. A reserve, yeah, the ordinance reserves the right. Yeah, any ordinance reserves the right. I like that language actually better. Thank you. I would suggest we give our work since we find the work about the next meeting. Thank you. That's good. Okay. All right, before you, re you recap, Lisa, let me, uh, if we're going to, I mean, when, when we read by title, as it's currently written, should we, should we not add to that by title and introductory summary or something like that? My thing on that is that, yes, that can happen, but most generally, if it's the public works issue, that's what they get up and they read, they don't really read it for the Board of Aldermen's sake, because we've got it in front of us, they read it for the public's sake, so they know what exactly is on that, that press sheet. But I'm just thinking it might add some clarity if you add an introductory summary by title, because I think you need to read it by title to begin with, and you have to have some summary afterwards, but I do agree that uh, there's, I would like to see some type of clause in there that an alderman can request. I, I, I agree with that. I think they, you know, she has the right to do that. And that's not, well, you know, it reserves the right to do that. Because you've got, okay, it reserves the right to do that. You have your front page, which has a summary on it. That's usually what the department head reads. The next page is a ordinance. So that's what you're asking to read the entire is that, that ordinance language, which could be 10 pages long. Mr. Chairman. Yes, and we're getting deep in the weeds about how the current Board of Aldermen creates ordinances, you know, and whether it's summary or whatever. The point, I think, that Greg was making is that people from time to time have the need to say, no, I, I want to know exactly what you're voting on because I have an opinion about it and I want you to hear it. And, and, and in those cases, that's what we're providing for. Correct. Uh, and and I, think, I think the creation of a summary and I think all the other meeting rules and steps that go into doing business efficiently is the business of the board of Aldermen. All we're trying to do is write in the charter here to make sure that somebody can stop the board of Aldermen from pressing forward with the ordinance without clearly handing it to the record out loud what they're voting on. And I think if you add that, an Alderman has the ability to make that connection to face that. I realize there's a possibility for for a, a rogue caller to go crazy and disrupt things with that. But again, uh, I'll, I'll go back to the remarks that we got to kind of count on the people that elect the caller and the people we elect to be on the not to be that kind of goofy, broke individual. We'll say. All right, so, uh, Greg, do you have a, a, a wording that you would like to add into the It's got to be general care since the beginning of the next meeting. All right. All right. So, is that a motion? Well, uh, I already have my motion. I called for. Um, you 
you have a motion, but it has to be second. You didn't have it. Yes. Okay. So I have uh, a question. So okay. We can vote that down March the week here, so we can pick that up. Okay. So say that again. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to approve E by strike with striking by title. So if you want to go home now and pick that up at the next meeting instead of work on it now, just vote it now. Adjourn. Did somebody say? Yes, Greg did a long time ago. So, yes. Okay. Let's go. All right, go ahead. Jim Major. Go now. We're going against it so we can say that next. Okay, yeah. Ted Bowman. No. Susan Dope. Oh, Janet Emerson. No. Lisa Emerson, no. Jason Green. No. Steve Gunther. No. Sandra Arco. Michael McDonough? No. Charlotte Wilson? No. Mark Moore? No. All right, I need a motion to Very chain, Greg Walters? No. 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 No.